Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord once again. Amen. Amen. To be able to praise Him, love Him, serve Him, adore Him, and worship Him. Am I in the right place? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I hope so. Amen. Praise God. I want to welcome everybody by way of internet. I pray today that you're blessed by today's message. I entitled it, The Anointing. Amen. If we ever need the anointing, it's today. I don't know how you can be a Christian without the anointing. Not a real one, not a true one, not a dedicated one, not a committed one, because it's the anointing, amen, that gives you the strength and the power. It's the anointing, the Bible says, that breaks and destroys the yokes in our lives, whether it's from Satan, the world, or whatever it might be. Amen. We need desperately in these last days the church, the body of Christ, Needs the anointing. What is the anointing? Some people ask me, what's the anointing, Pastor? They, we should know that. If you've been in the Lord for any amount of years or time, you should know what the anointing is. But I'd be glad to tell you, share it with you. How, how do we get the anointing? How, how does it work? What do we use it for? Well, we're going to try to answer these questions today by the power of the Holy Spirit. The knowledge of His Word. See, there are several meanings, actually. That's where people, I think, get a little confused. There's different types of anointings. There's different meanings to the anointing. We'll cover some of them. Can't cover them all today, but we'll cover some of them so you get a real good idea of what the anointing is and how it's to be used. First of all, the, the anointing can be used uh, in the Old Testament. We see it's not different than in the New Testament. The anointing in the Old Testament was to anoint with oil a king, we see that in Scripture. They anointed kings with oil. They anointed priests to be priests of God with the oil. And the prophets as well. And the prophets would anoint the kings and the priests as well. So they were anointed to and to be set apart. That's what the anointing is for. It sets us apart. We are a peculiar kind of people, the Bible said. A royal priesthood. Amen. We are set apart. From what? From who? From the world. We are set apart from the world. We are set apart to do a work for God. That's what the anointing is. One of the things the anointing is for. And God would set apart priests and prophets and kings to rule, to reign, amen, to do His bidding, to do the work of the Lord. So now, the anointing is set apart for service. That's what it's, it's not for us. Okay, you may benefit from it, but it's not for you. It's for the world. It's for the lost. I'll show you that in a minute. It's for the world to be saved. It's for the church to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to be blessed by the anointing. Amen? Amen. So now, in the New Testament, and for us today, we see that the anointing is for every true believer. Amen. It's really for every true believer. Now, different levels of anointing, just like we go to 1 Corinthians, and we see there chapter 12, it talks about the gifts, the nine gifts uh, of, of the Spirit. Amen. And the Bible says, it goes on to say in that chapter, that God gives them to whoever He will, however He will, for whatever He will. Okay, so we see that it kind of coincides, it kind of goes together. Amen. The anointing with the gifts. Because the anointing is from the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the gifts are from the Holy Spirit. So we have to realize that they go hand in hand. Amen? So now we can see for every true believer, amen, and we want to make very clear and very sure that we don't uh, carelessly handle the anointing. I'm going to show you what happens when people handle the anointing carelessly. Don't take it as serious as God does. We don't take the anointing, amen, to the next level where God wants us to take it. You cannot walk in the flesh. Romans 8, 1 tells us we can't walk in the flesh. Okay, because you're going to fulfill the desires of the lust and the flesh. But he says you walk in the Spirit. So when you're walking in the Spirit, you're under the anointing of God. Amen. That's His power surging through you. That's the Holy Spirit using you however He sees fit. Amen. That's what the anointing is all about. Because then we see, we see what happened to King Saul in the Old Testament. He was anointed 
king by God, by the prophet Samuel. He was anointed king. He told him, go anoint him to be king. I don't want to camp here too long, but I'm making a parallel. He said, I'm going to anoint him to be king. But when you get the anointing, okay, it's up to you, again, not to use it carelessly, not to take it for granted, not to get prideful with it, not to be rebellious with it, not to think you're above everybody else. You should be even more humble, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But King Saul went astray. His heart got hardened. His heart got prideful. He got rebellious. And the next thing you know, and the Bible says he was prophesying with the prophets at one time under the anointing of God. He was anointed king. He was anointed to prophesy for a season. But then the root of bitterness and jealousy took over. Ah, oh, they're dangerous, dangerous. No more, no less dangerous today than they were back then. Maybe even more so, because we know better. But when jealousy and rebellion and all these kind of things, and, and God relates that to witchcraft, disobedience. So that's what happened with King Saul. Long story short is, hmm, God took away the anointing and replaced it with demons. Read it, 1 Samuel. Read it. Took away his anointing. Took away his kingship. Had him killed by the enemy. Said, I'm going to give that anointing. I'm going to give that kingship. I'm going to give my people a king, a man after my own heart, which was David, King David. Now David made his mistakes as well. David messed up big time, committed adultery, tried to cover it up with murder. And the prophet was sent to him, as you remember, and called him out on it. David paid a heavy price. What was the difference then between King Saul and King David? Their heart. Their heart. God knows we're all a mess. God knows we all have feet of clay. God knows we all come from dirt and dust. He knows that. But there should be a difference in us compared to the world and the rest of everybody else when we have the Spirit of God in us and when we have the anointing in us. Then we should stand out. We are separated for God's service. We are set apart, remember? And if we forget that, we get in trouble. And that's what happened with King Saul. He forgot it. He got prideful. He lied. He cheated. He murdered all the priests of his time and a whole family of priests he wiped out. And the list goes on and on and on. Evil took the place of good and righteousness. And he paid a terrible price for it. He was tormented the last days of his life, weeks, months, whatever it was. He was tormented by demons. And the only thing that would suit him was David would come and play his harp. And those demons would take off just for a season. And then they'd come back. He tried to kill David. How many know you can't kill God's anointed? Oh, Jesus. You can't kill what God has made alive in people. You know how many people tried to kill me? You know how many people tried to shut me up? You know how many people tried to lie about me or do all kinds of things because they can't stand the anointing? They can't stand the righteousness. They can't stand for what you stand for. Can't stand it. So they'll do all kinds of things to make themselves look a little better. They'll blow your candle out to make theirs brighter. Yes. But you can't kill what God makes alive. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now getting back to David real quick. David, the difference was his heart. The Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. He paid a terrible price as well. But not with his life. But he lost a lot of things, including his kingdom for a season. Some of his children were killed and raped and murdered. Because the Bible said, you see... The Lord told him through the prophet, the sword, the vengeance of God, the judgment of God shall not depart from your house from this day until you die. Right. There's a price to pay yes. when we play with the anointing. Yes. When we walk out of God's will for our life, there's a price we all pay. I don't care who you are. Amen? So we see back quickly in Psalms 51, if you're just taking notes, we see there David... Uh, after he was chastised by the Lord and all, and he copped a plea with God, and he's begging God, Lord, please, don't take thy Holy Spirit from me. In other words, Lord, don't take the anointing from me. I'm nothing without the anointing. I'm just sounding brass and tinkling cymbals, as Paul said in the New Testament. We're nothing. We can speak the Word. We can try to teach the Word, even try to prepare. But if there's no anointing on it, it's just words. Just words. 
We can talk to people and it just sounds like it all gets jumbled up without the anointing. We can try to go out and minister or sing and play music, whatever we do for the Lord, and it's just making noise without the anointing. Because it's the anointing that saves people. It's the anointing that draws them to Christ. It's the anointing, amen, which is the very power and the essence of God, which is the anointing. All it is is the power of the Holy Spirit resting on an individual that will yield and surrender to God and say, Here I am, Lord. I don't care what I got to do, where I got to go, who I got to talk to. Just use me for your glory and walk in obedience with God. You may not be perfect because you're not. You may stumble from time to time. You may fail and fall from time to time because the Bible says a righteous man falls down seven times, but they get up every time. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, glory be to God. So we see, without the anointing, it's nothing. David knew that and he begged God, please, take anything you want, but don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Hallelujah. Now back to us today. The believer can be anointed to teach. There's an anointing to teach. Amen. Otherwise, it's just, you know, people nod out on you, you know what I mean? There you go, you know, look at what time, oh yeah, you know, they're daydreaming. Without the anointing. Amen. You get anointed to preach. God anoints you to preach. God anoints you to evangelize. God anoints certain people to heal the sick. Goes along with the gifts again and to do miracles, signs and wonders. You can't do any of that without the anointing. Amen? Amen. You want to pray? You want to pray? God, anoint me yes. for your glory. Jesus. Not that I can go around showing off. Not that I can go around being prideful because that won't last. You'll fall and stumble for sure and maybe never get up. But, I, but you want to be able to be humble in the sight of the Lord. But God uses that for healing. We see in miracles in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, around the 12th chapter we see uh, that God alone Amen. It gives those gifts again uh, along with the anointing. You can't have a gift without the anointing, to be honest with you. The anointing is the Holy Spirit. And the gifts come from the Holy Spirit. So again, they go hand in hand. No, you can't operate. You know, if you do, you're doing it in the flesh. And it won't bear much fruit, if any at all. Hallelujah. See, the word Messiah comes from the Hebrew word being, meaning the anointed one, Christ. Is the anointed one. See, there's different kinds of anointing. You're anointed with oil. The joy of the Lord. Amen. They, they anoint for joy. They anoint it for the kings, we said, and prophets and so on. They anoint also for their, their complexion. They use it as, a, as a, a, a salve. They use it for their hair. They use the oil for all kinds of things. So there's all kinds of different anointings. Amen. But the, the, 